on est directement ciblé. On ne sait pas ce qui va nous arriver, mais on sait qu'un jour, quelque chose va nous surprendre. In Rwanda, journalists covering sensitive issues regularly report being threatened and systematically silenced. Some critics even disappear or die in suspicious circumstances. This was the case for John Williams and Twali, an investigative journalist covering striking inequalities in the country, human rights abuses, and even covert military operations. He died in what was officially said to be a car accident in Kigali. At Forbidden Stories, along with our media partners from the Rwanda Classified Project, we investigated his death and pursued his work. Samuel Baker, one of the last journalists to collaborate with Antwali, fled the country and joined our investigation. The risk is high, but again, doing journalism is more of a, a job, is a calling to many journalists. A few months before Antwali's death, both reporters traveled to Eastern DRC to investigate the murky deaths of Rwandan soldiers there. In fact, since the Tutsi genocide ended 30 years ago, Eastern DRC has seen a flurry of armed conflicts fueled by the mass exodus of hundreds of thousands of Hutus and the region's coveted mineral resources. Today, rebel armed groups clash with the Congolese army, notably the M23, known for their violent war crimes. Officially, Rwanda denies involvement in the conflict, yet several UN reports have confirmed the presence of several thousand Rwandan soldiers there. They are either deployed directly under the Rwandan army, the RDF, or have joined the M23 troops. Local researchers who infiltrated the rebel group provided us with videos of Rwandans fighting alongside M23. <laughs> Some of the commanders of these troops, who once held high-ranking positions within the Rwandan army and even served in UN peacekeeping missions, later participated in a conflict that UN forces are striving to resolve. For former members of Kagame's administration, who are now in exile, the reason for their presence in the DRC is clear. He's obsessed with controlling the Kivu, the Eastern DRC, for reasons we all know, the minerals, the money. You've been to, 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 to Kigali recently. You see how beautiful it is, how clean it is. All those uh, skyscrapers that you s see there, all those resources are not internally generated from, uh, from Rwanda. We looked into the stories of several Rwandan soldiers sent to fight in the DRC, where some of them die anonymously. We identify them through social media posts documenting their passing. We were able to determine that the majority of the 13 soldiers identified lost their lives in the DRC between 2022 and 2023. Some of their families were merely told they died in service and were instructed not to discuss the matter publicly. Speaking out, this is what they will call being an enemy of the state, which is totally wrong. And people want to normalize this? No, not me. And I think we need to stand up and understand our rights and defend them. Humanitarian organizations estimate that there are about one million displaced people in North Kivu. Internationally, the issue is drawing significant attention. The United States and France have recently increased their diplomatic efforts to mediate the conflict. Yet, no concrete measures have been taken. The European countries, they say, the Eastern Congo is a problem, and we understand that. But Northern Mozambique is really positive what they're doing and providing support, especially from the French side, support to Total uh, and, and their business interests there. So we, we have to take that into consideration. They think and present themselves as presenting a siloed approach where we'll condemn Rwanda here, but we'll encourage Rwanda there. And that's just not, you know, it's it's playing into the Rwandan's hands. I mean, the EU is continuing to make deals with Rwanda. Uh, you know, the EU is continuing to uh, promote Rwanda. Um, and that's fine, but they're not doing it in this, at the same time as actually holding Rwanda publicly accountable um, for the abuse that M23 is committing or the RDF is committing uh, in Eastern Congo.